The suspension does seem to still work though, so... This isn't working! Alright, that worked. So I'm actually going to have to trim this top piece just a little bit just so I can get this third panel on and uh, get everything to line up perfectly. So, this is what I did yesterday, and then this morning I was looking at this, almost getting ready to tack this in place, and I realized, ah, I almost forgot to weld probably the most important weld on this piece, is I almost forgot to weld this. So yeah, that's uh, great. So even though I just finished uh, tacking these in place, uh, let me cut these off, so therefore I can weld on both sides right here, also try to weld as much as possible right here as well as uh, right here, but it's a little bit narrow, so I don't know how far I can go. But once I weld that, then I can tack all this stuff back into place, and then weld all this up. And these aren't even going to be hard to take off. It's literally just, up. Uh, they're pulled off. Yep. These tacks aren't really that strong.
All right, this thing is tacked together right now. Uh, I will be putting a piece of plate uh, right here on both the top and the bottom right here. Uh, but first, I really want to weld these seams really well first. Then I'll put a piece of plate over it and then weld uh, that piece of plate to this. That'll really strengthen this thing up a lot more than just simply just putting a whole piece of plate on here and just welding it right here. All right, so I'll save welding this together uh, till everything's on, till the seat's on and the frame's finished, because I'm probably going to have to disassemble this to weld it together, so I kind of want to save it till everything is on so I can just finish welding everything on here. So now, let's start working on adding the seat on here. Uh, like I said in the last video of this project, I need to weld a new piece of plate on here because I messed up this angle. And I'll actually be able to use that to my advantage. I'll be able to cut a hole in here and use this for ventilation. So that'll actually work out. So then I just need to figure out whatever height the back end of the seat needs to be. So I'm trying to figure out how do I how do I mount this to this frame? It'd be awesome if this was just a little bit closer to right here, but um, I, I was originally thinking, what if I just cut these off, either move them or lengthen them somehow, or just weld on new ones? Unfortunately, I don't have any aluminum square stock that's this same uh, diameter. But it would be it would be nice if I didn't have to modify this thing because I think the reason why this is removable off of a dirt bike is if you wreck. And if you bend or break this thing, you simply just bolt it off and buy a new one and bolt the new one on and it's fixed. 
And it'd be nice to have the same thing on this. It'd be nice if I didn't have to modify this thing so, so I could replace it easily if I didn't end up breaking this thing. So I think the best way to do this would be to just make a mount that's welded onto the frame that just sticks out really far right here and I can just simply bolt it onto this. It may look a little weird having a mount stick out this far, but I think it's a lot better than having to modify this. All right, we interrupt this video to show you guys this. This is an ArcDroid Plasma CNC plasma cutter. They reached out to me a couple weeks ago on Instagram and asked, hey, do you want one of these things? And of course, of course I said yes. So if you guys haven't seen this yet or haven't heard of this thing yet, this is an amazing small scale CNC plasma cutter that is new on the market. This thing's only been on the market for like a year or two. And, uh, I've, I've been playing around with this for a couple days now, like learning its features, learning how this thing works, and I gotta say, I'm, I'm pretty impressed uh, with this thing already. This thing has a lot of really awesome features. So, and, and if you're like me and you don't really have that much space, this thing's perfect because it doesn't take up that much space. You can set this thing up on a table if you have to. I'll be putting links for this in the description below. Definitely go check it out, and huge thank you to ArcDroid Plasma for sending me this thing. So, I built this table over the weekend. This portion is bolted onto the wall, and this portion of the table can be folded up and folded down to give myself extra space when I'm not using this, and then to use it, I just fold this thing up. And to hold it in place, I haven't really come up with a better way to do this. I just take this, uh, this box section, take a vice clamp, and then just clamp it into place. I do have to level this, which doesn't really take, it takes like 30 seconds to level it, and then this thing's ready to use. I also built this. This is the I really don't want to burn down this shed metal box, and basically it just fits underneath the table, just like that, and it's hopefully going to catch all the sparks. So, one of the awesome features that this thing has, it has a trace function. Basically, it comes with a stylus with a button where you can take any piece of cardboard, lay it down on the piece of metal, and then trace around that piece of cardboard, and it saves exactly this, this same pattern. And you swap the stylus out with the torch, you hit go, and it cuts out the exact same shape, which, that's awesome. You, you don't need... CAD software. You can still use CAD software on this, on this, but you don't really need it because it has this trace function, which is pretty awesome. So let's cut this. Let's try to cut this out. I actually just looked this up, and apparently you can cut aluminum with a, a plasma cutter. So let's see if we can cut this out out of half-inch thick aluminum. So I wanted to cut this out of half inch aluminum, but apparently the plasma cutter that I bought for this thing, it can't do half inch, so I chose to do it out of three eighths, and it did cut it, it's just it's not the cleanest cut ever. So to try it out, I also cut it out of three eight or uh, yeah, quarter inch, this is quarter inch aluminum, and look at that, that cut is super clean. 
Nothing to clean up on that. I also cut it out of 3 16 plate steel. And there's only just a little bit to clean up on that. So yeah, this thing is this thing is definitely awesome. It's gonna help out a lot cutting out tabs and cutting out stuff like this. So I just gotta clean this stuff up with the grinder, figure out where to drill the hole, and then tack this stuff in place. All right, so we got the mounts for this tacked into place. Also got the side panels for this tacked into place as well. Now I'm hoping, I'm hoping that this is everything the frame needs. I'm kind of tired of working on this frame and I just want to start working on wiring and dying to ride this thing for the first time. So anyway, let's, uh, let's start working on disassembling this frame because I need to weld all this stuff together. And it's going to be a lot easier to weld this when it's not assembled. Plus, I also want to weld a little bit more on the inside of this to strengthen up the frame. Why did I think that this thing's not going to fall over? <laughs> uh, it's a good thing we don't need the clutch handle because that just broke. We don't need a clutch. Uh, what broke? Anything break? I don't think anything broke, so we're good. So I bought these from Harbor Freight because I'm tired of burning my arms with welding and I don't know. It's, it's, it, it may just be just easier just to wear a long sleeve than to wear these things. So not, it's, not, it's not really for sparks, it's more for just tired of having my arms sunburned from welding. Yeah. It's not, so it's not hot down here, but this is really hot. I don't, I don't think my ground clamp is properly working. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know if I could do these. These feel like pool floaties. I just, 
I, I'm gonna go put on a long sleeve. Those, those things suck. Yeah, I'll admit, this looks, uh, it looks a little goofy. There's definitely a lot going on right here. Alright, this frame is now, I think, I think it is all welded together, and it is, uh, ready for reassembly. Now, I know some of you guys have been concerned about the structural aspect of this frame slash battery box that I'm building, and trust me, I'm also... Slightly concerned that you know if this thing is strong enough. So I did I did add uh, these on the inside of here. I also welded on the inside. I also welded most of the seams on the inside on this side. I couldn't really get. I did a couple on this side, but I can't really get at this because I can't really see. But I I did as much welding on the inside of this as a, and I also added these right here in some sort of. V shape. Uh, basically, this is really thick wall aluminum tubing that I have. It's uh, like a little bit thicker than quarter inch uh, thick wall tubing, and I basically just cut it in half and just put two of them in there and then welded it on both sides and here and there. And so, hopefully, hopefully that's going to be strong enough. I'm probably not going to be, you know, jumping this thing very often. I'm not, you know, this, I'm not going to be doing what a normal dirt bike can do with this thing. I'm probably, probably for the most part, I'm just gonna be riding this thing up my street. So anyway, let's start working on reassembly of this thing. This thing is stuck. Ah, ah crap. <laughs> so this bolt is uh, just refusing to to back out of there. I also rounded the head off, so that's why I'm trying it this way to get this thing off. All the others are. You know, it came off super easily, but this one is just, yeah, it's like super glued in there. Oh, there it goes. Now it works. That worked. So check this out. So the previous owner uh, did this. Uh, the These clamps, I think, are for a thicker handlebar, and these are a thinner handlebar. I believe these are 7 eighths. And he solved that by taking some radiator hose 
to make up the difference. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's a little strange. So, I did buy, I did buy a new handlebar. This is, this should be the right uh, thickness for, for these, so. So I was gonna leave this empty, but I, I think it looks a little a little bare. So I may just add these, and uh, yeah, I think that I think that looks a little bit better. So, I don't get this. I don't get this. I lowered the seat on this about an inch and a half or two inches, and yet still, and by the way, the back tire is, it is on the ground, it's, it's just being held level uh, with the jack stands, yet still, I can't touch the ground. <laughs> I can't touch the ground on this thing. I mean, I, I can just, you know, slide off the seat a little bit or even just do that. But, I mean, it, am, am I this short or something? I, this thing's only a 250. It's only a 250, and yet I still, I mean, I can barely touch the ground with both feet at the same time. Just barely touching it with this, my toes. So... Uh, the suspension seems to, uh, seems to still work great. A bit noisy for some reason. Not really sure what that squeaking noise is, but uh, yeah. Alright, the dirt bike frame is now finally, finally done. That only took six weeks, six videos working on this thing, and we are now finally ready to start working on wiring and hopefully wire, wire this thing up and taking this thing for its first actual test drive. Hopefully I can figure out how to wire this thing up and tune it and everything and hook up the LCD screen without any issues and uh, stuff like that. So now again, huge thank you to ArcDroid Plasma for sending us one of their CNC plasma cutters. I can't wait to really put that thing to use. Uh, that thing's gonna, gonna make it a lot easier to uh, to build this kind of stuff. So again, uh, links in the description below for that thing. Definitely go check it out. I, I am noticing uh, just from just from jumping on the front forks just for just like a couple seconds. Uh, there now is some um, fork juice, fork oil uh, on the ground as well as on the tires. So I think we have a leaky front uh, seal on there. So I may have to replace the seals on these front forks, which is, it's not impossible, it's, I've done it before, it's just, it's kind of a pain, so. Now hopefully in the next video of this project, I can wire everything up and figure out how to tune this thing and figure out how to hook up the LCD screen, hook up everything uh, on here without any issues, and hopefully we can take this thing on its first actual test drive in the next video of this project. Now originally I was planning on uh, putting this thing away and starting work on part three of the CR125 mini quad project. 
But uh, I am I'm dying to I'm dying to get this thing working. I'm dying to ride this thing. So I may actually just work on uh, this again uh, this week and uh, trying to get this thing running and working and save part three for the following week, just so I can uh, you know just continue working on this thing. So anyway, that's gonna have to be for next video of this project. But for now, I gotta end this video here. Thank y'all for watching. I'll see ya in the next video.